Hello and a very, very warm welcome to the Wipro Erdian Sustainability Quiz. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the seventh edition of the quiz. As we kick off our quarterfinal rounds, I just want to make a small mention that we had a huge turnout today. Or uh, Not only today, we had the uh, huge turnout even for our online prelims. We had two sets of online prelims. We had an online pre-quarterfinals. And from there, the top 32 have emerged and they will battle it out in these quarterfinal rounds. So without further ado, let me introduce to you our top 32 and each of these guys are champions in their own right because we are talking all about climate, we are talking about sustainability, we are talking about the environment, a very, very serious topic. Still, it requires a lot of work while doing research for this and I'm sure they have all spent enough time to make sure that they have qualified and they've qualified with some amazing marks. So let's begin with the first of my finalists. Here, it, he comes up on stage, uh, on screen rather. I'm so used to saying stage, it's no longer live shows. We are all doing only online shows. So for my first participant online is my first contestant, Kapil Kapse from SGGS Institute of Engineering and Technology, Nanded. Kapil, welcome to the show. Kapil, prepared for the show? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, that's a hesitant yes, but I hope you actually are prepared because my questions are not going to be easy. The second of my finalists is Naga Lohita Kodali from Vinod Gupta School of Management, IIT, Karakpur. Hi, Lohita. Prepared for it or uh, a hesitant prepared is what you're going to yes, give me? prepared. Prepared for it. Okay. Moving on to the third of my participants. And this is a special mention in participant for me because he did knock off a lot of socks last year to get to be the defending champion this year and the champion last year, of course. Uh, my third participant is Preetam Padya, Shailesh J. Mehta, School of Management, IIT Bombay. Preetam, welcome back to the quiz. It's nice to have you back. And uh, unlike last year, this year, are you prepared or were you prepared better last year? Uh, no, I mean, it's, I think... It's sort of the same and I'm hoping that if I qualify further, the prep will hold me for strength. I mean, it'll be. I, I, li I, like, I like that confident, non-confident answer because the part of it is uh, hopefully it will hold me instead. I like the humility there. It's a, uh, Pritham, you should take part in these, uh, beauty would be a wrong word to it, these uh, talent contests because I think you got a very nice answer there. Hopefully it will uh, hold him in good stead because he is the defending champion. The onus is on him and of course, if somebody were to upset him, it will be a huge upset in the quarterfinal. But... To make sure that happens or it doesn't happen, we still need to finish our lineup. Our lineup finishes with the last of my participants here today. It is uh, Shovik Senapati from Xavier Institute of Management, Bhuneshwar. Shovik, welcome to the show and welcome to the quarterfinal. Congratulations, you made it clear. Last year, were you also in the quarterfinals? Uh, no, uh, I couldn't participate last year due to some academic engagements. Okay. From this time. Um, no, you just look familiar to me. So I'm just trying to place where I've seen you. That, ladies and gentlemen, brings up uh, the top four. And the top four, the rules have been explained. They all know what needs to be done. But before that, let me quickly run you through this quiz. This quiz has got two different segments. On the first segment, we have 15 questions. And these questions will be comprised basically of the world of sustainability. Very generic, very in the news or very from the history etc etc the second uh, segment of this quiz will comprise 10 questions and these 10 questions will be about climate sciences very very serious topic and uh, i hope you guys are prepared for it we will begin with the first of my segment earth and sustainability here it comes <laughs> concept of the round is very simple. You're going to get questions on your screen. It could be text-based or visual. Plus 10 if you get it right, minus 5 if you get it wrong. Only one person who's the fastest on the buzzer gets an opportunity to answer the question. Just make sure that whatever you see on screen, you, you read it well. Because if you make a mistake, that mistake will cost you. That's a minus 5. Also, nobody else gets a chance to answer the question. You're the only one who gets to attempt and all of us know who that will be because it's all on the buzzer, right? All of you have got your buzzers on. Let's quickly do one buzzer check before we start just to be on the safer side. All of you. 
Okay, all four of them. So in this order, if it were to be this order, Pritam was the first one to go on the buzzer. He would get an opportunity to answer the question. If not, uh, he gets the answer wrong. Minus five, I'll give the answer out and I'll go on to the next question. Question number one is a text-based question. This is all you need to tell me is whose 2020 sustainability target am I showing you? Here we go. Which company or corporation is the answer? Here we go. Ah, a target by 2020, invest 250,000 hours, or it's about people, it's about protecting the environment, it's about renewable energy, anybody going on the buzzer? Or oh, someone has Pritam on the buzzer. Yes, Pritam. Quickly. Uh, I'll say this is Body Shop. Why would you say this is Body Shop? Uh... I mean, Body Shop, I remember answering Body Shop a couple of times last year. And <laughs> I remember there was something, uh, they, they basically, fo uh, their focus is on, you know, sustainability and uh, and ensuring that even though it's like a, a cosmetic product of sorts, it's on uh, natural uh, things and not exploiting, uh, like, you know, exploiting nature as such. He says it's a recall value. And I would say it's a recall value because I had asked a similar question last year. Of course, not the same question. It's about Body Shop. I, I genuinely believe they're doing a lot for the environment. And that's the reason I started off this quiz with this. And that was the 2020 target of Body Shop. That means Pritam gets himself a plus 10 on the Body Shop answer. Very good answer, Pritam. Nice way to start the quiz. And uh, I will just uh, freeze the frame on my buzzers. And I will move on to question number two. The scores are live. Everybody gets to see them. It's on your screen. Pritam is with a 10-pointer. Moving on. Question number two. Here it comes. This is a discipline which aims to combine the fields of conservation and animal welfare. The foundation principles of this discipline are do not harm individual matters. Ah, Pritam again on the buzzer before I could finish. What discipline was this that I was talking about giving you the different aspects of that discipline. Yes, Pritam. Uh, compassionate conservation. Are you sure? Uh, yes. I love his confidence. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the defending champion. 10 points to him again. Very, very good answer. Compassionate conservation is the right answer. Let me clear the buzzers. I have cleared the buzzers. 10 points again to Pritam. Pritam, who moves to 20. Next question. Question number three. Ha! Ah, these are the seven principles of what? It's a type of etiquette. Be considerate of other visitors, plan ahead and prepare, respect wildlife, travel and champ, uh, camp on durable surfaces. Mm. Oh, this time it's Pritam again. Yes, Pritam. Uh, your mic's yeah. on mute. Yeah, I'll say this is uh, like sustainable tourism. Chai, chai, chai. It's a, these are principles of something specific. That's minus five that Pritam gets. And uh, this is a concept called leave no trace. This is a leave no trace concept. I was showing you the seven principles of leave no trace. A little bit in a hurry. Uh, by the way, Shavik, Loita, Kapil, if you let this guy, he will just keep going on the buzzer. I've been seeing him for almost, how many years now, Pritam? 15? 13? Uh, yeah, I think around 12, 13. 12, 13 years. I've been seeing him as a kid to now. He will just keep going on the buzzer. Do not let that happen. Uh, start going on the buzzer. Start scoring points. Next one. Let me clear the buzzer first. I have cleared the buzzer. Moving on to my next question. Question number four. Okay. This was the UN conference on the human, human environment in Stockholm in 1972. My question is, what was established by Morris Strong, its first director, after this conference? An organization, of course, is the answer. And I'm not saying company, I'm being very specific. Organization, and I need a specific answer. Even if you give me a short form, I'm okay with it. Anybody risking that? Oh, my buzzers are open, but nobody on the buzzers on this. On this question, I'm a little surprised. Mm. Okay, Pritam again. Yes, Pritam. Uh, yeah, based on your clueing, I'll say UNEP, the United Nations Environmental Group. What was my clue that got you to UNEP? 
just said i mean your surprise moment is going for it so that was the like the okay. first thing okay so yeah my, my that was exactly what i meant it was a straight forward answer 1972 more is strong they can't possibly be anybody else U- unep or united nations environment program is plus 10 to you again pritam very very well done uh, rest of you hello get started or that lead is going to be just too big to surmount uh, the later stage i will clear the buzzer yes i have cleared the buzzer question number 5 here we go the maya of central america is said to have a fixed monthly ritual in which people of the village would gather and burn your rubbish in large dumps what is this considered a very very early example of it's practiced even today of course in a lot more systematic fashion and i'm on the buzzer with preetham again yes preetham um waste management why that uh, surprised look on your face uh i mean yeah no i was thinking like uh, i don't know i mean it felt like a little generic of an answer right It is, it is waste management very very well done this was a straight forward one guys rest of you come on start taking risks don't let him get away with this he's got 35 now i will clear the buzzer and move on to my next question question number 6 on your screen what is an ideology of limited participation in the conventional economy and minimal consumption of resources particularly through recovering wasted goods like mm. <laughs> Shovik you need to be faster uh, yes preetham you are the fastest again uh, this is a uh, freedom plus 10 one more time plus 10 one more time is what he scores nice 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 that is a 45 is where he is okay i uh, do you want me to give you guys the rest of you a break 2 minute break jake uh, mountain dew or some energy drink which will make make sure that you'll start going on the buzzer come on guys don't let him get away here we go next question well, before that let me clear buzzer i have cleared the buzzer okay question number 7 okay this is the nebraska soybean program what is the uniqueness to it or what is the context to it about the bus of course is bus is a part of the soybean program what is so unique about it anybody on the buzzer Five, four, three, two, one. No buzzers. No buzzers. Okay, nobody going on the buzzer on that one. Straightforward. I don't know why you guys are overthinking it. I'm. This is the first round. Is a generic round, not not so topical. So the straightforward part here is these are all. Uh, uh, Shavik, you went on the buzzer after I said no buzzers. Okay, so I can't I can't let you try that. Uh, but you still want to answer the question. No points though. so oh, i think i mean these are i mean those are the uh, like the waste residual of those nuts which are thrown away maybe they are used in in what manage in organic farming so that they get converted into manure ah thank god you, uh, you went in after i said no buzzers because you would have got a negative on that simple plain and easy soybean this is part of the nebraska soybean program basically all the buses here run on soybean fuel or biodiesel uh, which was uh, straight forward with the bus i thought okay no one on the buzzer moving on shovik doesn't get a negative on that luckily because he went after question number 8 is what you're going to get next ah <sighs> in economics this occurs when technological progress or government policy increases the efficiency with which a resource is used but the rate of consumption of that resource rises due to the increasing demand this is called a particular <laughs> Hi Pritam. Yes, hello again. And what is the answer? Uh, Jevons paradox. Jevons paradox is what he says. Plus ten to him again. Plus ten to Pritam. Uh, I know there's only one person that can qualify from this uh, quarterfinal onto the semifinal, but the rate at which the rest of you are giving me these half-hearted, sweet smiles, put on some aggression, guys. You have to take him on. You can't let him run away with it. Okay, let me clear the buzzer. I have cleared the buzzer. Moving on to my next question, question number nine. Ah, okay. This question is basically this: uh, Every October, UN Habitat and Partners organizes a month long of activities, events, and discussions on urban sustainability. This year, Urban October began on fourth of October. What particular day of observance is fourth October? 
UN Habitat and its partners. It's called Urban October about urban sustainability. Anybody on the buzzer? No buzzers there. That would... Oh. Uh, Did you go on the buzzer? I'm sorry. One second, one second, one second. Yikes. Ah, sorry, sorry. You were on the buzzer. I'm sorry. Yes, Pritam, you were on the buzzer. Go for it. Uh, what happened? I, 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 I don't know if I should give you these 10 points or just out of frustration that nobody else answering, I need to give you a minus 5, but I can't penalize you for that. Plus 10 to you, Pritam, again, World Habitat Day. Uh, are we going to start off an entire quiz with only one person scoring? Rest of you, hello? Don't do this. Moving on. Next one, question 10 is the number and the question there. Adimai recently won an award, okay? They were given this year's Equator Prize by the United Nations Development Program. All I need to know is under what categories, a specific three categories that they won on, you give me either one of them, I will give you points. And who is on the buzzer? Oh, nobody is on the buzzer. Okay. Nobody wants to risk it. Okay, nobody on the buzzer. No buzzers. No buzzers. Thank you. I'm locking my buzzer so that nobody goes after this. Uh, I thought this was workable. It was in the news. This year's Equator Prize. Huge prize uh, to Adimalai. The shift, the power to the producers. Uh, camp, uh, campaign. Anyone wants to try? No negative marking. Don't worry. There were three different categories under which they won. Even if you give me one of them, I'll give you points. But now I can't give you points because you're way past the buzzer time. Is it Sh sus su sustainable agriculture? Sustainable agriculture is what Shavik says. Okay. And what else could it be? I mean, inclusive development. There could be one more I can think of. Okay. And what is the other that you can think of? Don't worry. No negatives because we are way past that. Uh, as of now, I could think of these okay. two uh, Sustainable harvesting or agriculture, you would have got points for that because I asked any one of them, you would have, uh, you would have got points on that. The second one was the, uh, the category they won under was green economy. And the third one, which I thought because of the name and their logo, I thought that was a giveaway, was a woman empowerment. Women empowerment was the the biggest of the lot for which they were uh, celebrated as well as they got this prize for. Uh, ah, slightly disappointing. No one going on the buzzers. I don't like this. Uh, well, let me just unlock my buzzers because we need to start with the gameplay again. Question 11. Yes, sir. Here we go. This is a sustainable uh, city coming up in uh, the Middle Eastern region. They aim to reach the target. Oh, 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 oh. Shomik, yes. Uh, this is for, I mean, Qatar. I mean, this 2022 World Cup is coming. So they are creating a whole city, a new city for the tournament. And from then onwards, they will oh, manage how things will be there. But this is the fund I'm thinking of. Good try. Minus five though. Good try, but minus five. This is not Qatar. You got the country wrong because they were, uh, the idea was to produce 40% of their energy from renewable resources through this city that they're building and reach their targets uh, by uh, to 2050. That was the whole idea behind this. This is the United Arab Emirates. It's just the wrong country. I can't give you points on that because it's, this is taken from a model of that city and uh, which should be completed by, uh, by the way, by the end of this year. So that would be a good one. Minus five though, Shavik. Good attempt. Uh, let me just neutralize my buzzer or reload the buzzer. Next one uh, coming up for you. Here we go. It's a visual question. This is a part of the Milpa system of agriculture uh, pr practiced by Maya Chotori of Guatemala. The three uh, sisters of crops that are mainly grown here are, uh, it's, it's a part of the three crop system. If beans and squash are the two of them, which is the other? Beans and squash are a part of the Maya Chitauri in Guatemala, three-part agriculture system, which is simultaneously grown. Pritham, again, he's got the liberty to do that and the luxury because he's sitting on 65. Even if he takes a negative, it's okay. Yes, Pritham. Uh, I'll say uh, maize because that's the most grown crop. 
So you don't even need to be a part of studying sustainability or uh, sustainable agriculture. This is pretty straightforward. Beans, squash, and maize. That completes the trivatrum, and that would complete Pritham. 10 points there again. 75 points on that Pritham. Huge. Okay, I am neutralizing the buzzer, and I am going on to my next question. Question 13. It's called unlucky for few, very, very lucky for some. Number 13. Let's see what it turns out for my participants here. Here we go. Ah, identify a game from... Okay, somebody's on the buzzer there very, very fast. And that would basically mean, Pritam, if it is at that pace, uh, at least from empirical data so far of 12 questions. Yes, Pritam. Uh, Pokemon Go. What is the whole funda behind it? Um, so Pokemon Go has people going to various places and collecting Pokemons. Instead, here it's, they're just collecting uh, garbage to you know, clean up. The environment. Using a game which everybody is obsessed with on their phones and tablets and converting that into something environmentally friendly, Pokemon Go is the right answer. Plus 10 to you, Pritam. Oh, this is just going landslidal. If there's a word like that, landslidal indeed. And that is what Pritam's doing right now. 85 points uh, is what he gets to. And that will be updated. Yes, it's updated. We will move on to my next question. Before that, let me clear my buzzer. Buzzers are cleared. Question number 14. Almost bringing us to the end of question, uh, segment one. Uh, here we go. As of July 2021, there are currently two, uh, two four, two, four X sites. Mm. Hey, 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 stop, man. Stop. How many do you want to answer? How many do you want to answer? And the rest of you do something about it. You all are frustrating me here. Yes, please. Uh, I'll say wetlands. Uh, give me a better answer. Uh, it's dash I mean, sites. You're right, but I need an exact answer. Uh, Come on. No, I, uh, just because it's you, I'm giving a minus five on this. Anybody else, I wouldn't have given a minus five. He should have got this minus five. Just on wetlands, I'm not. I can't give you points on that. That's a minus five, Pritam. That is Ramsar sites. They're not just any wetland sites, right? They are specific Ramsar sites that I was talking about. Minus five to Pritam on that. You got two wrongs, right? So far, not bad. At least two of them you got wrong. Guys, rest of you. I mean, you all are becoming like me, spectators. If my job is to be a spectator. It's not your job to be a spectator. Do something about it. Start scoring. Here we go. I have neutralized the buzzer. Last question of the first segment. Here we go. In June 2021, the Assam government declared the state's sixth national park spreading over a range of an area of 422 square kilometers combining parts of Ripuchurag Reserve Forest. Mm. Shavik, yes, Shavik. Uh, I'll go with the guess. It is Bhupen Hazarika Park. I need a better answer than that. Oh, Bhupen Hazarika, I mean, national park. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. How? Uh... I'll still give you another try. I mean, considering the, the, the way the scores are looking, I'm going to give you another three uh, five seconds to give me another answer. Bhupen Hazarika National Elephant. Uh, that, 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 that. Come on, not on that. Give me a. No? It's, it's got a specific uh, name to it, uh, Shavik. No? Okay, no, I have it. to give you a negative on that. That's a minus five. It's the Raimona National Park. It is the Raimona National Park. It's a brand new one that's recently been, uh, uh, in June 2021 is when it was uh, renamed and constituted as the state's sixth national park. It's a new one. This is the Raimona National Park. Minus five to you, Shavik. I was, so, I was so hoping that you'd give me the right answer and get a 10 and get on that scoreboard. But that brings us to the end of segment one. 15 questions down. One defending champion on a rampage, and this is how the scores look. Can we just go on to the next slide? Yes, this is how it looks. Kapil, uh, Loita, I had to shorten your name so that it fits in there. So don't. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but I've got space only for first names of everyone. So that's Kapil, uh, Loita, uh, and Shovik on minus ten. Kapil and Loita yet to open the account. Uh, Preetham running away with this quiz with eighty points is. That brings us to the end of our first segment, leading the squiz with 80 points as our current defending champion. We will move on to my second segment. It's called Earthian Climate Sciences. Here it comes. 
Round is, or rather segment is called Earth in Climate Sciences. 10 questions on the climate sciences uh, topic. First three questions will be missing boxes. As in, you'll get a clue and uh, boxes below. If, if it's only one line of boxes, that means the answer is one word. If it's two line of boxes, of course, there's two words. I've dumped in a couple of letters to help you answer the question better. Uh, 10 points. Uh, if you get it right, minus five. If you get it wrong, it remains the same. But please remember how many ever questions you get score here. Each of them will be weightaged into 2.5. Currently, it looks like Preetam that, that that would happen with because with 80 and just 10, uh, 10 questions in the second segment, very dicey for someone to catch up and beat him. But I would be very, very thrilled if someone can do that. I really hope someone can do that. But 2.5 is the weightage. That is what you will carry on to the semi-final Preetam if you qualify or whoever else qualifies. That is what is going to happen. Plus 10 if you get it right, minus 5 if you get it wrong. First three are missing boxes. The next three are connection or lateral thinking questions. The last four are text or visual based questions. Okay. Any doubts? Nobody's got doubts. Okay. Best of luck. Question number one. Missing boxes is the part here. You need to tell me. Question number one. It's a one word answer that everybody needs to figure. One second. Okay, anybody going on the buzzer? The question's on your screen. Okay, Preetam, you, you are on the buzzer on this. Uh, I'll say Cirrus. Spell that. C-I-R-R-U-S. These clouds cover up to 25% of the earth and have a uh, net heating effect. Uh, all about climate sciences or the science behind climate change. Cirrus, he says, is the right answer and plus 10 to him. Nice way to start even this second bit of this. Okay. That gives Preetam 10 points and takes him to 90. I will move on to my next one, which is question number two. One more missing boxes question. Here comes the question for you. A collection of airborne solid or liquid particles reside in the atmosphere. Oh, 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 oh. Preetam and Shavik, quick but Preetam fastest on the buzzer. Yes, Preetam. Uh, aerosols. Plus 10. Plus 10. Nicely done. That takes him to a century. Nice way to bring up a century in the first of our quarterfinals. That's pretty much setting a benchmark for all the other participants coming on in the later quarterfinals. Moving on. Uh, next question. Number three. One more missing boxes. UHI is a metropolitan area that is significantly warmer. Okay, Preetam, indeed it is. Yes, go for it. Urban heat islands. You said you are not so sure if you are prepared or not. That was like a goalie you gave me, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> he admits the truth there. Yeah, he, that was a goalie that he gave me. That is plus 10 again, urban heat island. Very, very good answer, Preetam. Plus 10 to you. Moving on to my next one. Before that, let me clear buzzers. Buzzers are cleared. Yes, sir. Question number four. This is a connection question. You just need to give me a final answer. I'm not looking at the explanation. Paul Roland Julian NCAR. And this other gentleman whose name I don't want to give because it makes it too easy. The word Julian is a huge part of the answer. Nobody going on the bus. Oh, oh no. Okay, apparently not. Pritam is going on the bus. Yes. Um, this is NGO. Which is? Uh, Madden Julian Nosilation. And that is what? Uh, it's like, it basically sees the amount of uh, like variation in the, in the weather and like it checks the atmosphere and then finds the variation in the weather. Named after Madden and Paul, Roland, Julian. It was discovered at NCAR and this is the Madden-Julian oscillation. 10 points again to Preetam. I sometimes wonder, the rest of you are chilling so nicely that it's like, it's, this is becoming a spectator sport and not a competition. Moving on to the fifth of my questions. My buzzers are cleared. Here we go. This is another connection or a lateral thinking question. 
The key part is carbon cycle. It associates with ocean circulation. It's a type. It's a type of something. Five, four, three, two, one. No one on my buzzer, so buzzer remains closed. This, uh, what I was looking at there is uh, a box model. This is a box model that I was talking about. Uh, the schematic there is of a simple box model that is used to illustrate fluxes in geo, 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 geochemical cycles. Box models are used to uh, in the studies of ocean circulation and the carbon cycle. That was a two part there and, the and that was the schematic of the box model. The answer there was a box model. Last one, uh, this one is a classification system that I'm looking at as the answer. The answer is a classification system. Here we go, connection question, but before that, uh, no. <laughs> yes, Preetam. Do you, do you think, guys, honestly, do you think you want me to do this one-on-one -on -one with Preetam? I mean, come on, somebody else go for it. At least Shavik was attempting something. Uh, uh, Lota and Kapil, you guys really need to attempt at least. Come on, Preetam. Yes. Just a uh, copy in climate classification. Explain. Can you explain the parts to it? Yeah, so it's also known as Koppen Geiger, so it's based on that. And uh, the other, the other is the representation of the world in Koppen climate, like based on what categories, which area, like geographic area falls into. And I then see the third. So you're saying this is the the Koppen climate classification. Koppen Koppen climate classification is what he says it is. You know, uh, my team and I have spent so much time trying to figure out and nail these questions down. We've taken our time to do research. And this boy comes in, jumps in, takes a buzzer, hits the answer, gives me an answer, breaks it down even for me. Uh, once you're done with this uh, course of yours, what are you doing next year? You won't be a part of any college, right? No, no, we're working. You're working. So if you find some time, come and research for me. I think that's a better option than sitting and making you answer my questions. One more 10 points to him, ladies and gentlemen, plus 10 to him, a beautiful Geiger classification that he gets right. Ah, this boy. Okay. Next one, uh, the, uh, ne uh, the next four are text or visual based. Here they come for you. Question number seven. One of the climate research unit's most significant products is the Crutem Global Data data set of land near surface temperature anomalies, which is compiled in conjunction with the Hadley Center for Climate Prediction and Research. These records are used by, the, by IPCC in all their publications. CRU, the one who is behind CRUTEM, the mm. data set. Pritam again, I don't think I even need to look at my buzzer if who it is. Yes, Pritam. Uh, University of East Anglia, I'm hoping I remember it. He hopes he remembers it. This, this almost looks like one of those, uh, maybe I need to play this down and, and not make it look like I know everything. But that is the right answer. The East Anglican uh, Angli uh, University would give Pritam another 10 points. Jeez, that is 150. The two, If you add those two questions that he got incorrect, and if you add two questions to Sovik, and I think one question Sovik answered without the buzzer, that's pretty much... 16 out of uh, 22 questions so far, Pritam. That's just ridiculous. Okay, let me just clear the buzzer out. There's a reason why he's the defending champion, ladies and gentlemen. That is what I call being prepared. Last three questions. The, I don't really see the fate of this quiz changing, but let's go through the last three questions, please. Here we go. What is this a visual representation of? Shavik on the buzzer this time. Yes, Shavik. I mean, this is kind of, you know, heat reflection. I mean... I, I need a little more specific answer. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But I need, need you to give me a more specific answer. Don't remember the exact, I mean, term. But hey, explain. Can that, you explain it? Uh, I mean, so th this is, I mean, what, what, the, whenever the heat, I mean, the heat falls on the ground. And some while some while the soil traps, and some of the I mean that that's kind of thing. I mean that's that. Okay, some of it traps. What does it do to the other other part to it? 
I mean, other part will be contributing to global warming. Goes back into the atmosphere, basically. This is the diagrammatic or a pictorial representation of Earth's energy budget, which is the differentiation between the amount of Earth that, uh, the heat that is received from the sun and the heat that escapes onto the outer space or to the atmosphere. 10 points to you, Shavik. Good answer. It's nice to see someone else on the scorecard. Uh, that would basically mean it nullifies your effect, but at least it's not nice not to have a negative. And wait, let me just... Uh, I will just clear my buzzers out because without that, we can't go ahead. Okay. Last question or rather penultimate question. Here we go. What are these? These are pools of open water that form on sea ice in warm... Okay. Who's gone on the buzzer? Let me just check that. That would be... Shavik again, right? Yeah, it is Shavik again. Yes. So these are the glacial lakes, I mean, which we have found in various, I mean, European and Asian snow, snowy regions. And this phenomenon is like due to global warming. I mean, those, gla I mean, those ice, I mean, I mean, those ice regions are getting separated due to which what, I mean. Those lakes are getting formed and there's water. pools of water that accumulate because of the warmer temperatures. Yes. I am I'm finishing your answer for you. I know that, but that's a plus 10 to you. Very, very good answer. He does get himself on the scoreboard with a... Did you give him a 10-pointer though? Yes. No, no, not you. Not you, Shavik. No, I was just checking with my back-end team. I think they've given you a 10-pointer on that. I... Oh, no. They, yes, they have. Okay, let's clear the buzzers out for the last question of quarterfinal one. Here we go on that. Ah, who's on the buzzer? Okay. More than a third of food produced globally never makes it to the table. Food loss and waste, uh, waste account for what percentage of the total human-made greenhouse gas emissions? You've got four options there. All you need to do is pick one. <laughs> Preetam on the buzzer, not surprisingly. And according to Preetam, what is this percentage? I'll say 8.2. He says 8.2. I will agree with him on 8.2 and I will also give him 10 points to finish this first quarter final with a super, super, super performance of 150 points. That's just huge amount of questions that he's answered and answered correctly, importantly. And it was not only about the general part of this quiz, it's also about the climate sciences part, which he, those connection questions, um, to be honest, uh, when we had the discussion about these questions, we uh, we thought maybe some of them would be very tough and nobody would answer. But apparently, Preetam, you made even that look easy for us. So thank you for coming prepared more than anything else and answering those questions for me. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the final scorecard or, or the Earthian points that come up on uh, the screen. Kapil and uh, Nagarovita, congratulations for being quarter finalists at least. That was very, very nice of you to qualify here because it did pit you against thousands of people to reach this particular place. Shavik, very, very good performance, but just not enough on that uh, juggernaut of answering that Preetam came up with. And ladies and gentlemen, it is our defending champion Preetam who moves on to the semi-final. The first qualifier and first qualifier qualifies with 150 points. Of course, there's a percentage of that or a weightage of which he will move on along with him, not the entire 150 that we will do in the, uh, in the back end later to figure out how much, how many you answered of that. Do you, do you have a uh, stock on how many you answered in the last round? I think it was seven. You think it was seven. Okay. I will do a double check on that later. So that's not a problem. So you basically take in 2.5 into seven into the semi-final uh, when you get there. But uh, best of luck for the semi-final. Uh, it will be as tough as this or tougher. But considering how well you come prepared, that would be really, really nice to see how the semi-finals pan out. But don't go anywhere. We have quarterfinal two lined up very, very soon. I am Lloyd Saldana, your host, signing off. This is the Wipro Earthian Sustainability Quiz. Seventh edition, quarterfinal one done. Look forward to quarterfinal two. Thank you. Take care.